Today we're going to go over one of my absolute favorite artistry lessons, and that is keep it loose. What do I mean by that? I'm gonna show you guys in this video. Let's get started. So first I'm gonna take my glasses off and I've had these on for about 10 minutes. And if you guys are having age concerns, do yourselves a favor and get these eye patches. Any kind of eye patch is gonna help because it drives moisture down deep into the skin and it helps to plump out any fine lines or deeper set lines. And it really helps the makeup go on much smoother. Go ahead and add your SPF, your vitamin C, your eye cream, or whatever routine you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly put on this hydrating spray by Kosas. It's the Plump and Juicy Vegan Collagen Spray. I love this for a quick hydration. I use this on myself and in my kit. And then we're gonna head right into the makeup look. I just wanna quickly state a few things about this makeup look. Keeping it loose with your makeup application simply means not going in with hard pressure or collapsing your brush and doing these kind of hard buffing motions. When you go in loosely, just like a painter does, then you get that painterly finish and it creates a really soft, beautiful makeup look. That's something I want to reiterate because I talk about this a lot on my channel is you do you. If you have a makeup look that you love and you like to go in with a heavy hand and you like to go in aggressively with your brush and it makes you feel good, then do that. These are just suggestions for you guys and the best version of you is all that really matters. So let's go ahead and first start with some eyebrows because I'm feeling utterly naked without them. On half of my face, I'm going to do what I see quite often with clients, which is more of a heavy handed application. And on this side, I'm going to do the loose version. So I'm gonna go in with my Makeup Forever Artist Pencil. These can be used anywhere on the face. And this is in the color Limitless Brown. So what I see a lot of is this type of motion where people are drawing their brows on. And I get it, it makes sense. You wanna draw your brow because you're trying to fill it in. Now I'm taking a brush and softening it because I do notice clients do soften it. They don't want to just have a harsh line across their face. Now this color is a little light and this was not by mistake. I did it on purpose because I'm going to show you guys if you have a eyebrow pencil that's too light for you. Say you change your hair color. You can go in with your eyeshadow and it will further soften that brow. In fact, I find a lot of people don't like to use the darker colors in their eyeshadow palettes. This is a great way to utilize what you have. I'm going to go in with this black small domed brush and just lightly powder that on top. And here we are, but we could take it a step further to soften it even more. Now don't get me wrong, I am a big lover of the 1920s and the 1960s and the 1990s brow because that thin, bold brow comes back every 30 or 40 years. So I do like this style brow, but I'm gonna show you guys how to soften it a bit while still getting the same effect. You can completely skip the pencil, grab a little bit on your brush, and we're gonna do a technique that I've talked about consistently, but for those of you that are new, we're gonna do the scribble technique, which means we're not drawing on the brow. We are trying to get to the skin underneath the hair so that the brow hair sits more on the surface rather than underneath the pigment, which obviously our brow hair sits above the skin. But when we put too much product on, it can flatten the brow hair and kind of lay it down and create a thick, hard line. So if you scribble, you just wiggle back and forth with a very loose wrist hand motion. So I'm very softly using the brush back and forth, not trying to draw any line here, just following the brow shape. And I wanna note that I am putting the product on the side of the brush right here, not on the tip, because I'm using the flat part to lightly apply. At the end, I'll use the tip of the brush to detail, but right now I'm just trying to stain. Now when I was in art school, I went in like most art students with my hand like this and ready to draw. And the first thing you learn is no hard lines because then it creates a harshness and you kind of can't pull back from that. The eye just wants to be drawn towards that hard line. So if you stay soft and intentional where you place your hard lines, for instance, like a liquid liner, that's an intentional hard line. But most of the time, you want these very soft, loose application techniques to create a really beautiful painting of yourself. But hopefully you guys can see how much softer this looks and how it's bringing out my eye shape rather than you being drawn to this just graphic hard line. Here's a makeup artist tip. If you reach for your brush and you find that you're headed towards the bottom, 
that means you're going to go in with a heavier application or a more bold look, which is fine, but just know it'll be more intense. If you stay back here at the end of your brush, loosely working so that your hand can flick the brush like this, you'll get a softer look. Let's go ahead and open these eyes up by curling the lashes and an eyelash curler makes the most significant difference in your makeup look because the hairs, if they're going down, pull the eye down. If you open the hairs up and out and open, opens the eye up. Makes sense, right? So we're going to go ahead and go at the very base of the lash. I like to hold for five seconds, release, but not move it away from the eye and hold it again for another five seconds and release and again. I have a backup of a bunch of mascaras and I'm doing a drugstore comparison for my TikTok and one of the mascaras is the Sky High by Maybelline. This isn't sponsored, it wasn't given, I just happened to have it here so I thought I would go ahead and use it for today's video. I have heard really great things about this mascara so we could try it on together. What in the world? I'm incredibly impressed, you guys. This reminds me of Chanel's Inimitable Mascara, and I stopped using it because the formula changed. But where it is similar is this brush, the one that has the little grooves in it and the little spikes that get every single little lash and lengthens and stretches them. I'm absolutely loving this. I cannot believe the price. Here's the thing, though. Is it going to hold? because I find that drugstore mascaras do a great job initially being extra black and making your lashes look pretty damn good, but then the weight of whatever they put in the product formula weighs the lashes down and they just look terrible. So I'm excited to see by the end of this video if the lashes are still standing. Ooh, this next one hurts my soul a little bit and that is eyeliner. Harsh eyeliner all the way around the eyes. Now I get it. Eyeliner brings the eyes out, it draws attention, but can also create an intense harshness. This is what I see often. Pulling and placing across the lid in one hard line. Now not bad looking, right? But I'm telling you guys right now, it's closing the eye up and it's creating less of a lid space. So there's a heaviness there. Then I see this, where they take that same pressure and color and just wrap it all the way around. If you're a diehard fan when it comes to this makeup look, a suggestion would be go in with a powder that's similar color, one shade down so it's not as deep, and wrap it around to soften it a little bit. Take a little bit of this color and go right on top. You'll see instantly that it softens and gives an ombre look to the eyeliner. Here's the dark. When you do a dark color on top and a lighter color on bottom, even just a half a shade to a full shade, it keeps the eyes open and big and bright because you're not taking one solid color and wrapping it around the eye, which draws attention, but also closes that lid and eye space up. Because remember, dark colors, what do they do? You guys know, if you've been watching my channel, dark colors recede. They pull things back into space. They close, which can be sexy and sultry, but it also can make your eyes look really small, whereas light colors pull things forward. So it's about finding that balance. And in makeup, there's no right or wrong. There's just me giving you guys tips that you have options. All right, let me show you guys how I would do it, keeping it loose. I like to work off the side of the pencil and go as close to the lash line as possible, especially as you age. Skin starts to fold and our lids start to droop so you get an overhang of skin. So you wanna stay really, really close to that lash line. Just wiggle back and forth. If my client has a full mono lid or has droopy lids where the skin hangs all the way over, almost on top of the eyelashes, I go in underneath to create definition and bring out the shape of the eye. From there, I'll do the same technique as I did on the other eye, grabbing a little bit of that powder that matches the eyeliner, and I am just stippling it or stamping it across the lash line. If you want, you could stamp it since this has a nice angle to it. You just take the longer point, place it towards the eye, and then drag it up a bit. And then you can bring it back in to meet that line. Taking the lighter colors here, I'm going to softly work that lower lash line. Now say you want to add shadow. Let's go ahead and go to this side and go in with a heavier hand, and this is what I see a lot. Loading the brush, creating a block out here, 
bringing it in, and then I see the same amount of product all the way on that brow ridge. Now I know for those of you that have a hooded lid, you want to make the eye stand out or open it. So going on the brow ridge is good, but doing the same amount of product and pressure all the way around will create a pretty intense look. Then I see the blending action back and forth. Now the individual will go in with a lighter color and brighten that area on the lower lid that has no product on it yet. And the frostiness come up over that ridge, creating a bit of a muddy look because there's so much product and textures going on now between the matte and the shimmer that it can't help but get a bit muddy. Now I'm gonna go in with a light brush, loose application. Grabbing the same color, I'm going to work very loosely at an angle feathering it, my wrist being very loose here. Then whatever's left over, not adding more product, I'm just gonna go back and forth loosely onto that brow ridge. There's no need to do a hard line just because you have a hooded lid. Going in now with the medium light colors, not the lightest, I'll softly work it from the inner corner of the eye to the center. Whatever's left over, I'll lightly place on the brow bone. Quite the difference, right? Let's go ahead and get into the complexion. We know it, we've seen it, we've all been guilty of doing it. The concealer. Let's do this. On this side, let's do a couple dots. Why is it important to go in with a lighter hand with the concealer? The concealer is incredibly pigmented. Less is more because as the day moves on, you will start to crease more and it will create a cakiness, it will separate, it will dive into pores, fine lines, and deeper set wrinkles. I'm gonna take my sponge, blend it in. Now I totally understand why people go in with a heavy-handed concealer because they wanna cover it all up. And on camera, it doesn't look too bad. But if you guys saw me face-to-face -face, in person, you would be like, wow, she has a lot of concealer on and it would really emphasize my under eye bags, discoloration and fine lines. Now keeping it loose, I love to use my fingers when it comes to concealer because of the heat and oil that we carry in our hands helps to moisten up those pigments, soften them. Now here is a perfect example of creating a natural skin-like beautiful editorial look when it comes to concealer. How do you know you did it right? Do you see a little bit of light bouncing around my skin still? There is some transparency. Remember, concealer is opaque. It's rich. It covers. So you're not going to get as much light moving around the skin as you would if you went in with a thinner application, which creates a natural form of light because your skin is still shining through. Who's ready for some foundation? And my absolute favorite technique is this. Because I love to waste foundation, <laughs> especially Chanel. Ah, uh, this one, it's for the social media oohs and ahs, but it just drives me nuts. So I see this and then this heavy application like a mask covering up every layer of your skin in a thick, cakey mess. So from your perspective, it probably looks pretty good, but don't worry, I'm gonna bring it in so that you guys see the difference between the two sides at the end. When it comes to this side, take about that much, I lightly push it into the skin towards the center and then work out. Taking a clean sponge, this is one of the best tips I can give you is this technique for foundation. You wanna press and roll. What this does is it pushes the makeup into the skin and takes off any excess. And that's the big part here. Taking off the excess makeup will help your powder lay down better. Let's go ahead and add the highlight. Take your brush and I do this technique a lot. It's one of my favorites. I grab eyeshadows and use them all over the face, but I use the lighter colors and I will very lightly add it to the high points of the face. But what I see is this heavy application and then back and forth so that it looks like a stripe on the face. And then I see that same technique down the center of the nose. Now what I recommend you can use powder, but my favorite is to use a balm because balm sticks are any type of texture that has that gel wet finish. So to keep it even here, I'm going to grab a little bit of that product and just lightly dust it across the high points of the face here, tiny bit above the brow, a little around the ear, a little towards the chin. But if you want to soften it even further, which this is my favorite way to wear highlighter, and you want to skip the powder altogether, take a balm, 
tap it on the high point of the face. Now you can really create a bright, bold look if you mix the two like I'm doing now, which is use a powder and then soften those pigments with a balm. Now that still has a lot of kick to it. I would even pull back further, but I wanted to show you guys that if you want that high beam effect, you can still do it without having a stripe across your upper cheek area or your cheekbone. Another one that's my absolute favorite is this, and I'm kidding by the way. Now this is too much product and I see it often. See this tapping, buffing motion and then feathered. This is stripey. Do you see what's happening here? Stripe, stripe, stripe. So it's like my foundation is one solid color. My blush is creating a whole other section of color and then the highlights creating a whole other section on top of that, not to mention my nose. And what I recommend is if you're going to go straight from the applicator, just do a very light handed application and then go in and use your finger and tap. I'll go in with my finger now, be able to control the product application a little more here. Just build up the color. Love it or hate it, it's a very popular trend of skipping the cupid's bow and going up way over your lip. I'm gonna do that on that side. On this side, I'm gonna work with my natural lip shape, just going right on that edge. Taking a light pink color, going in with a lot of pressure and layers and layers of lipstick. On this side, it's going to lightly tap. Now a lot of people like to leave this as is with two tones, totally fine. Like I said, it's a preference. I'm just showing you guys how to soften this though a bit. I'm going to grab a little brush, just soften that line up so that they blend together, the lipstick and the liner. Whichever one you prefer and that makes you happy is the one I highly recommend doing because your happiness is the most valuable thing when it comes to any type of artistry or fashion, you name it. But hopefully you enjoyed these tips. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Now the best way to support me as a content creator is to go ahead and use the affiliate links down below for any of the products that I used or you can shop with any of my links. I have a list of stores every time you shop. I get a commission and it helps me to continue to do this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, hit the thumbs up. If you hadn't had enough, you can head to TikTok or Instagram where I do many tutorials and education and show you guys the latest and greatest. And you can also head to shrevoyage.com to book me for a one-on-one -on -one lesson. All right, everyone, as always, thank you so much for watching. Continue to take care of you, each other, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now, everybody.